Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back with the Audi V8 conversion on the Rockstar. All right, so those of you who have been watching this series will know that I have already got this uh, Audi V8 out of the Audi A6 I got. It is sitting in the engine bay. We have an engine cradle that is uh, doing the job for the time being. There's a few tweaks I still need to do on that. And um, it's, it's all sitting here, but not completely connected up to the car yet. Um, if you guys want to catch up, I'll put a link up above. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying this sort of stuff, uh, please think about subscribing. So, uh, I've had a week off, so um, it's good to be getting back in and I am uh, all enthusiastic about getting this thing actually in the car and running and get it out on the track, um, which is the motivation for this whole build. It's gonna be my fun track car. And today, what I need to think about looking at is, um, is doing some of the final connections I need to do. I need to connect up fuel lines. I need to connect up the, uh, these two cables here, which are actually the, um, that's actually the, the gear shift cable linkages. I need to get them connected. I need to connect up some vacuum lines. There's a bunch of things that I need to sort of tie together and work out how everything's going to go to get the physical connections done. I also need to work out how to connect up the, uh, I still got to do the, the airflow meter and an air filter and exhaust. So there's still a bunch of bits and pieces to go uh, on the physical connections. And then I've got to do the ECUs, which is the thing that is worrying me the most, but I'll get there. So first up, I think I'm gonna have a look at what I need to do to get these gear shift cables to mount up with the gearbox. So at the moment, these cables are the factory cables. They come through the center tunnel, up over the top of the engine and, uh, and guide up over here, all the way through the engine bay, down the back down here, and then underneath, this is the end of them here, and they come out, and they are, at the moment, just too short. This is supposed to clip in, this part here is supposed to clip in here, and this one here is up here. So they're, they're 80 mil too short from where they need to be. And obviously the end of these need to clip on. This one will clip on up the top. This is the, uh, basically the up and down movement of the gear, gearbox. And then this one here is the left to right, uh, if you know what I mean. So I need to get a little bit more length up the top to uh, get these to fit. And I think they'll, they'll reach. It's just a matter of a little bit of tweaking to get that little bit more length. All right, so I ended up having to release the cables down inside the center console here. And because um, they're sort of pinned down and uh, I need to make it more a straighter run to give me a bit of extra length to make it uh, all the way to the gearbox and over the top of this bigger engine. And um, it took a bit of trimming from the inside of the center console. At this stage, I want to leave the center console in. This is going to get stripped out. This car is going to spend the rest of its life as a, uh, as a track car, but um, for the time being, if I can leave this in here, even if I switch strip out the carpet and stuff later and I've got a sort of center console, it's not a bad thing. Um, and uh, this will be quite nice. And now it's actually all connected. Um, we actually have all the gears. So uh, gearbox connected. Moving on to the next thing. All right, you know it's my favorite time. It is time to drop the engine again. I've got some bits and pieces I need to uh, play with. And, uh, and check and then hopefully we can assemble the engine and uh, put it back in for good. I hope. All right, so engine is out. Uh, it doesn't come in and out as easily as I would have hoped. Um, basically, 
It's a bit of a pain, but I'm not going to be pulling the engine all the time. But I have to remove the, uh, I have to basically hold the engine up, remove the sub frame separately off of the engine, and then uh, drop the engine down. It doesn't come down uh, on the sub frame because of the angle of this uh, connecting part here. It basically gets stuck. Uh, you can tilt the sub frame out by itself. Um, but you, there's not enough tilt in the engine because the engine's so tight in the engine, but the engine basically has to come straight down and the subframe has to tilt, so um, not that big a drama. Anyway, um, now the engine's out. One of the main reasons I need to get it out is because I have uh, finally got my delivery of my clutch and flywheel. And, and uh, let me show you here what I've got. So I've ordered this. It's quite heavy, but it's a single mass uh, replacement flywheel because um, there's a few options for these things out there available basically uh, because people have been trying to convert these uh, V8s in Audis to manuals for a long time uh, there are a few options out there so this is a uh, um, off-the-shelf conversion clutch uh, flywheel and then I've got an off-the-shelf clutch uh, that goes with it this is one of the uh, the cheaper options I could find which should be enough to handle the power for the time being so uh, let's start pulling this gearbox off and putting, seeing how we go fitting the clutch on there. All right, so I, um, I'm a little annoyed. The, um, the packaging I got that uh, clutch in, it came from the US, it's very, very beaten up, and um, it's missing two bolts. It's missing one flywheel bolt and one pressure plate bolt. I've managed to, pressure plate bolts are less important to be brand new hardware, so uh, I've used one again off of uh, the old pressure plate. Uh, I'm gonna have to go and get another flywheel bolt to match in with those other flywheel bolts which is a real pain I may have to just get a new whole set of eight um, but it all fits on I was worried I might have to use a spacer in between the flywheel and the um, uh, the the crank the end of the crank because uh, sometimes some of the the combinations they've used lots of different combinations in all of the Audi engines all seem to sort of be very similar and some need spaces and some don't but this lines up nicely the uh, the flywheel clears the starter motor lines up um, I will also note that this, this uh, flywheel, being the manual flywheel, it actually puts the, um, this sort of uh, lumpy area around the edge is the pickup for the, um, the crank angle sensor. And the position of the crank angle sensor is different from the manual to the auto. And this lines it up for a manual box. So uh, it, makes it, uh, makes it all nice. Now I've got this sort of sitting on here. I need to see if the, um, if the gearbox will actually bolt up. Um, I have seen that I may potentially need a 5mm spacer that ring, rings around between the engine and the gearbox, which again is a factory Audi part that some of the cars used, some didn't. So I just want to see if it lines up, if it sits on there, if it's all going to work just bolted on or whether I need, a, need it. So uh, let's see how it goes. Well, after a bit of wrestling, I really love putting gearboxes on engines. Uh, yeah, that's a lie. Um, but uh, we can actually see that there's, this is now uh, sort of as hard in as it's going to go. I'm, I don't, obviously don't want to overstress things, but um, I'm going to need that spacer to uh, make this all fit. It just, it's, it's just too tight. So it's a factory unit. I should be able to find one and, uh, and order one and get it in. And... Uh, that will actually give me enough sort of spacing so this will all bolt on and work as intended. But uh, the principle is there. The clutch and the flywheel are going to do the job. I love how simple the whole swap is using this gearbox. Um, for starters, on the 
original Boxster engine, the crank angle sensor was actually mounted to the, the engine side of the car. Um, in this case, the crank angle sensor needs to be mounted to the gearbox, and this new foil was set up for it. And this gearbox here had this little sort of uh, cable management little clip. And I flick it out and look at that. It is the perfect size hole for the crank angle sensor out of the Audi, the automatic one, which I can just transfer over and bolt it on. Now I do need to make sure that it's not going to interfere. I have heard that uh, some of them um, can bottom out and actually touch on the, the, uh, the actual crank itself or the, uh, the flywheel and, and damage it, but uh, that slips straight in there doesn't get much easier than that. So obviously we can't do anything more about uh, that side of things this week because I've got to order the parts. But um, what I can do, another reason I got the engine out is to have a look at the fitting of a bunch of these parts. And um, as you can see here, this is the throttle body for the engine. And at the moment, it is really, really tight in the engine bay. So I had to look and see here how I can try and get the air into the engine. I need to be able to get the, uh, the airflow meter on somewhere and, uh, and I need to sort of get, get the air to come in and enter into the engine. And that is where I am uh, I'm looking here and I need to move some of this pipe work so that I can run a 90 degree straight off of here, run the pipe around. I can put the airflow meter over here somewhere, that's fine. Just as long as I can sort of get uh, a really tight run across here, which means deleting some of this stuff, which is not that big of a drama really, because uh, this heater pipe here, this is what originally went to the overflow and that's um, what I replaced with that Y pipe I made up the other week. Uh, so this is no longer needed, that can go. Um, this is another pipe out of the heater, which I'll just probably block off. Um, again, I think it went to the, um, uh, the overflow. It's just a, it's a breather. I can probably move some of this, uh, this wiring slightly and, uh, and try and sort of tuck things out of the way so that I can get a nice tight run in here and, uh, and get that done. It's also a good time uh, having the engine out to go back and look at how I'm gonna do some of these. These are the vacuum lines and just work out the last bits and pieces that I actually have to connect on this engine that are just sort of sitting free and clear. We've got uh, uh, yeah, more vacuum over here and fuel lines and stuff that I need to have a look at and um, work out where I'm gonna put them. So I'm looking here at this uh, outlet of the heater hose, and like I mentioned, this go this originally came from the was the uh, return from the overflow tank, but uh, I no longer need it, and it's in the way of where I have to run this uh, intake tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and actually going to weld it up, close it up. This one I may actually cut off a little bit and drop down, but this one here definitely going to interfere. So uh, yeah, if I can cut it off sort of short here. I don't want to pull the whole thing off. Um, I know that is lazy, but um, at the moment, it's just, it's it's too much to, uh, to actually pull it all off. It goes in underneath. It actually connects through and goes in underneath the uh, uh, the plenum. And I don't want it to pull that all off and, and, uh, and see how it all connects. Uh, it's easy enough for me to just mask it up and weld it in place, uh, weld a cap onto it while it's in place there. I'll just uh, cover up everything else. And uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of welding. Okay, so I've welded these up now. I've just uh, painted them black as well. I did both. Uh, this lower one I can cut off and reuse, but I just need as much room as I can to get through this area here to be able to put my inlet in. Um, there is not a lot more I can actually do until such time as I get more bits. So we have a clutch and a flywheel that are gonna work. I have a bunch of the plumbing uh, basically sorted out. You can see uh, 
planning through some of these bits and pieces uh, a bit further. It's uh, it's really coming together. I am very happy with the progress. So uh, yeah, I'm basically done on what I can do for now on this. A bunch of parts to order. Um, I'll get stuck right into that and uh, we'll see how we go moving forward. I am quite excited. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really looking good. It's really coming together. Now, if you guys are enjoying this uh, and you want to help us out to uh, keep me building these silly things, uh, you can join us on Patreon and watch the videos a day early ad-free. Uh, and if you need parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices first at PorschePartsByJeff.com. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.